Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. And just to know guys, I'm battling COVID this week, so not feeling 100%, but I think you're going to like the topic of today's video nonetheless, if you can stand my voice for the duration. I'm excited to share with you my top 10 home lab tools for 2024. These top tools span everything from hypervisors, hardware, software, and utilities. Now, whether you're a seasoned home labber or you're just getting started with your learning journey, these are tools that I have found personally to have made my labbing experience smoother and more efficient. So let's dive right into the list. And now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nikivo Backup and Replication. Nikivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nikivo supports a wide range of environments, including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances, along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs, and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. First up, we have the first hypervisor on the list, and that's Proxmox VE in 2024. No surprise to most of you, Proxmox VE has become a top choice for home labbers, especially with the uncertainties surrounding Broadcom and VMware. Proxmox offers a full-featured solution using KVM and LXC for running both virtual machines and containers. What I like about Proxmox is that it is open source, and even without a subscription, you get features like clustering, high availability, disaster recovery, live migration, HCI storage with Ceph, and more. It's also a great choice for many PC builds with Realtek network adapters, which are not supported by VMware. Proxmox is normally what I throw on a mini PC that has a Realtek adapter. Proxmox is the first home lab tool that I'm using as it helps form the base of my virtualization stack. And also cool to mention is the new import wizard for importing your VMware ESXi virtual machines. Next on the list is VMware ESXi. Despite the changes brought about by Broadcom, ESXi remains the gold standard of hypervisors. Now, let's face it, if you remove Broadcom from the equation and you remove the price of vSphere, I think most will agree it offers hands down the best solution for virtualization. It has all the bells and whistles that we've come to expect in the enterprise. It offers a smooth, fully featured experience with ESXi and vCenter server and you can also create HCI clusters with VMware vSAN. Now, even though I also appreciate Ceph and Proxmox for those capabilities in HCI, I think vSAN is incredible in what it can do, and it has my trust and confidence as I have a lot of miles of road behind me with vSAN. Now, despite the Broadcom buyout, you can still get access to all the VMware products in their catalog with a vMug Advantage subscription, so do check that out. Third on the list, we have Ventoy. This tool has revolutionized how I create bootable USB keys. I have used and loved Rufus for years now. However, with Ventoy, you can make much more efficient use of your large USB drive these days, especially with sizes of USB keys, what they are now. Instead of using Rufus and burning a single five gig Windows Server ISO to your 256 gig USB stick, with Ventoy, you can copy multiple ISOs onto the USB drive, and it creates a menu to boot from and choose the ISO that you want to load. Pretty cool. This saves a ton of time as you don't have to repeatedly burn different ISOs to a USB key using Rufus and you also are not wasting all the unused space on those new and large capacity USB drives. Fourth on the list is Docker. Docker is the most well-known containerization software allowing you to run applications in containers without building virtual machines. Now this includes all dependencies in the application image and this helps to ensure a consistent experience across different environments or for different developers. For home labs, Docker makes it easy to run new software without the overhead of virtual machines. Now, with that being said, Docker has allowed me personally in my home lab environment to drastically reduce the footprint of my lab as I can now run lightweight containers for 
most of my services without having to provision full virtual machines. Now this has many implications in a positive way since you don't have to have the RAM, possibly not the compute, as well as the storage that you need to have and provision for a full virtual machine for each application. And then you have the headaches of the dependencies and required software that needs to be installed. You can't have applications coexist on the same host whether that be Linux or Windows, so containers simplify all of those challenges. Now we are halfway through our list. At number five, we have Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL. If you use a Windows machine as your daily driver for work or even at home in the home lab, WSL is an invaluable tool, and I have found it extremely helpful in my home lab. It provides a full Linux terminal environment within your Windows machine without having to dual boot Windows and Linux or running a full virtual machine. I use it for a lot of Linux tasks like running ad hoc Ansible playbooks and open SSL commands among others. There are just many different tools that run better in a Linux environment than they do in Windows. So I find it extremely handy to have WSL available and ready to use. And it's a great way to have Linux available to you on your Windows machine. Number six is Ansible. It's one of the best configuration management tools available and it's agentless. Let me say that again, it's agentless, meaning you don't need to deploy agents across your nodes. And that is a tremendous amount of work for lifecycle management, deployment, all of those things. And with Ansible, you can automate tasks across your home lab, configuring servers and even cloud infrastructure and using it for configuration management to help with drift or other tasks that you may think of. I know one of the cool projects that I have introduced in my home lab is pulling a list of Linux virtual machines from my vSphere environment and then using that list with Ansible to keep my Linux servers updated. Now let me know if you would like to see more on that project. With Windows, I am currently using another solution for updates, but I may very well pivot over to this Ansible solution that is homegrown for me in my home lab environment for my Windows updates as well, as Ansible now is also a very viable solution for Windows environments, as well as even Active Directory Kerberos environments. Seventh on the list is the Ubiquity Unify Network Solution. The Unify Solution is a combination of hardware and software that combines to form a robust network management ecosystem. With the Unify Network software, you can manage all your Unify gear and that includes switches, access points, cameras, and more, all from the proverbial single pane of glass. Many hate Unify for uh, some of the issues that they may have experienced with them and love them or hate them. I think one of the great things that Unify has going for them is price and the cool hardware and software that you get. Many find the Unify price tag for their hardware to be hard to beat, and they have a lot of great solutions that allow you to run pretty cool things at home without breaking the bank. If you're like me, that is an important consideration. At number eight, we have the Tiny Pilot KVM. Tiny Pilot is a device that is perfect for remote access to servers, especially headless ones. The Tiny Pilot provides full keyboard, video, and mouse support, and it's based on a Raspberry Pi with custom software that's written by Tiny Pilot. I use it extensively for many PC reviews and other on the bench work. Keep in mind, Tiny Pilot is a proprietary solution. You can also build a cost effective open source KVM using the project Pi KVM if you find Tiny Pilot or other solutions based on the project too expensive. Either way, it's a great way to have out of band management for certain devices. Ninth is the Synology NAS. It's my main storage solution in the home lab and it's used for storing raw video content and as a backup target for solutions like Veeam and Nikivo backup and replication. Nikivo even runs natively on Synology, making it a true backup appliance without needing a front end server, which I think is extremely cool. And stay tuned possibly for a video on the Nikivo solution coming up soon. I also use my Synology NAS to run one of my Twingate connectors for VPN capabilities when I'm away from home, and this has been rock solid. So it's a great all-around solution and platform for the home lab that does way more than just storage with all the application features, containerization, apps, and the security that I really find to be great with Synology products. Last but not least, we have GitLab. For CICD pipelines and hosting code repositories locally, 
GitLab is fantastic. I use it for various tasks, including keeping VM templates fresh, running backup scripts for my VMware host to pull that VMware host firmware, and GitLab's integration with Docker makes it even more powerful for home lab automation. You can run GitLab runners inside of Docker containers, as well as the GitLab solution itself. So there you have it, my top 10 home lab tools, at least that I am using in 2024. These tools have been incredibly useful in my own home lab, and I hope they'll be useful in your labbing journey as well. Hopefully you'll find something on the list that maybe you haven't heard of or saw in this fashion. Let me know in the comments what home lab tools you have found to be helpful. I learn as much from you guys as you do from the videos that I upload. Also, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more home lab and virtualization content. And as always, leave your comments and questions below. Once again, and I'd love to hear about the tools that you're using in your home lab. Well, stay safe out there, guys. Stay well, keep on home labbing, and I'll see you guys on the next video.